Hi everyone, my name is Vaibhav. I'm a registered migration agent at Aussie Group. Aussie Group. I hope everybody is keeping well and uh, keeping safe themselves. Uh, today we are going to discuss on this live session about the invitation round report that occurred on 13th of March 2020. Uh, as we are going to discuss about the invitation round. First, let's understand how the invitation round works and how the algorithm of the EOI works in the scale select. Now, each candidate who qualifies the minimum criteria for subclass 189 or a 491 family sponsorship, they actually have to first lodge an expression of interest. Right now, to qualify for these two visa, minimum requirements are that you must to have must have minimum a positive skills assessment for the nominated occupation. Your occupation must be on a medium and long term scale occupation list for you to be considered for subclass 189 skill independent visa and the subclass 491 under the family sponsorship stream. Then you must have minimum six each in IELTS, that is the minimum criteria though. So that does not mean that you can get an invitation with six each only. That this is the minimum criteria, and you need to complete minimum 65 points for you to be qualified to lodge an expression of interest for these two subclasses. Now, once you lodge an expression of interest, depending on based on the information that you fill in to the EOI, which is in the skill select, the EOI system calculates the points based on the information that you fill in uh, into the application form. Now, once your EOI is submitted, depending on the points, and then your date of effect, the day you lodge your uh, EOI with the time and the date is recorded and your points are recorded. Then every month, the Department of Home Affairs conducts the invitation round. And they go from high ranking to low ranking candidates starting from let's say maybe 100 then 95 then 90 then 85 then 80 right now each month the department of home affairs conducts the invitation round and each month they will publish the report based on the invitations they have sent for the last invitation round now today we are going to discuss about 13th of march 2020 invitation round report now, in subclass 189, in general categories, like overall, the Department of Home Affairs had invited total 1,750 candidates. Now, and for subclass 491 family sponsorship, they had invited 300 candidates. Now, for a subclass 189 visa, the last cutoff for non pro rata occupations was it uh, who lodged an EOI at 90 points, and the last person invited with uh, the EOI date of effect of 29th of January 2020 who lodged an EOI on 6 37 p.m. So anybody lodged an EOI after that is still waiting. Correct? Now if you are in a non pro rata occupation then that means and if you are at 90 points you can expect the invitation in one month's time or two months time because the last cut of the person who's been invited is already at 29th of January provided that the department obviously invites let's say close to 1000 people a month. If the Department of Home Affairs reduces the number of invitation, then also the waiting period can go longer. But we are expecting that because the Department of Home Affairs until 13th of March has only invited 6,950 people in total uh, for subclass 189 and sub for subclass 491, they have only invited total 1,300 candidates. So we believe that um, there is a still a big potential for the department to invite uh, more people for next month or even next couple of months i would say because we we believe that the department would want to take these numbers to at least ten thousand or close to ten thousand so which is standing at at the moment as as i said six thousand nine hundred and fifty for subclass one eight nine in total in this financial year and total thirteen hundred for subclass four nine one now without wasting any more time we will jump into the statistic statistics and how you analyze uh, the situation and how do you uh, come to a conclusion whether you can expect the invitation or not? Right? So as I said, subclass 189, the last cutoff for a non product occupation is on 29th of January 2020. As I said, we are expecting the department to invite roughly around 1,000 people at least next month. So if that that is, uh, if the Department of Home Affairs invites close to 1,000 people in April, then people with 90 points in any non product occupation can expect an invitation in one or two months time. For a subclass 491 family sponsorship stream, if you do have a relative in Australia living anywhere except Sydney, Brisbane and Melbourne, uh, if they're living and they're in, in Australia in any of these 
except these areas and so they are basically living in any, any designated regional areas and they are an australian citizen or permanent resident and, if, and they are a direct relative a blood relative of the primary applicant or their spouse so that means you can count your uncle aunts and your first cousins as a blood relatives so if you do have any of uh, your relative uh, falls under this criteria and uh, if you if they're living in a designated area then you can definitely lodge an expression of interest for a subclass 491 under the family sponsorship stream now once you lodge an expression of interest as i said the department will rank people based on the points and for a general non priority occupation the last cutoff was at 90 points now let's talk about each occupation under the pro rata uh, stream so first occupation which is the hot favorite occupation nowadays which is accountant so the last cutoff for an accountant was at 95 points and it has remained so for last three to four invitations that we have seen that since november 2019 the invitations uh, are pretty much uh, coming at 95 points for accounting accountant general which is when when i say accountants that is accountant general management accountant and taxation accountants the last person invited who lodged an eoi at 19th of june 2019 at 11 45 pm so anybody who lodged an eoi at 95 points in accounting field is still waiting after 19th of june 2019 so if you have lodged an eoi maybe in july august or september you can still be hopeful that you'll be invited very soon in the next two to three months but if you have lodged an eoi let's say recently at 95 points you can ex you are expecting a very long waiting period could probably be six months or even more as you can see the person who lodged an eoi on june 2019 got an invitation in march 2020 that means that person almost waited for nine months so but the good news is that the department is inviting good number of people so definitely this queue is moving a bit faster now and we can see that every month it's it's coming up one month on top right so if somebody let's say in, in april we are expecting that this uh, cutoff date would move forward to somewhere in july now for uh, auditors which is external auditor or internal auditor uh, the cutoff was at also at 95 points but there is a huge gap between accountant and uh, the auditors because the auditors the last person invited with 95 points who lost an eui in 31st of january 2020 at 7 12 pm so as you can see that it's almost a six months gap between accountants and auditors so if you are having an occupation in accounting and you can also have an assessment as an auditor and if you can collect all the points that you're claimed claiming in auditor as well then you probably want to switch your occupation to auditor's occupation so that you can probably expect an invitation faster than accountants at the moment however but if you're claiming an experience as an accountant then you might not be able to do that because your work experience as an accountant cannot be counted as an auditor but this is a good trick that people who have claimed let's say regional area uh, studies and they've got naughty and professional year and uh, superior english and they're coming up at 95 points and they've lodged in you at, as an accountant I would definitely suggest them to change their occupation and change, change it to auditors so that they can expect an invitation faster than uh, an accountant's occupation. And also, we are expecting probably if the things remain similar for next three, two to three months or four months, then auditors might even go down to 90 points. So then the people who are in accounting occupation can also try and switch their occupation to an account auditor because that cutoff might go down right this is just an indication that it may go down depending on the number of invitation for the next three to four months if it remains same yes there are very good chances that it will go down to 90 as well now for electronics engineer uh, the cutoff for uh, electronics engineer in thir on 13th of january and 13th of march 2020 uh, was at 90 points so anybody lodged an eui at 90 points until 29th of january 2020 at 4 49 pm has been invited already so that means if you're at 90 points as as an electronics engineer you can be uh, very sure that you're, you're you're likely to get an invite in the next couple of months but if you're at 85 you can still be a little hopeful if the things goes well and as i said if the invitation round uh, continues to be at thousand for next three to four months the cutoff might even go down to 85 for electronics engineer now for electronics engineer there was an invitation for a subclass 491 family sponsorship too for a family sponsorship stream, the cutoff was at 85 points and the last person invited for the electronics engineer was at 15th of January 2020. 
at 1.58 p.m. So the cutoff date is 15th of January for 85 points in electronics engineer for subclass 491 family sponsorship stream. So if you do have a relative, it is worth noting that you can apply for an expression of interest for a 489, uh, 491 uh, state of family sponsorship stream so that you can uh, at least secure the 491 invitation and uh, live and work in a regional area for three years and get your uh, subclass 191 visa that I will explain later on after we complete this analysis part. Now, as you can see that there was no invitation for a subclass 189 or subclass 491 under accountants and auditors. The reason is because the department states that if the uh, the allocated spaces are taken by subclass 189, then no invitation will be issued for 491 family sponsorship. So therefore, we have not seen in last six to 12 months, I think, we have not seen anybody getting an invitation in accounting and auditors field. This is the main reason as because there are many candidates and many applicants in subclass 189 and the skill select generally first allocates the places to a subclass 189. And if there, is, there are places remaining, then only those places are allocated to subclass 491. And therefore, the people who have uh, lodged in UI uh, for a 491 family sponsorship and accounting and auditors have not been getting an invitation for subclass 491 family sponsorship. Moving forward, uh, engineers in mechanical engineer, production engineers, and uh, industrial engineer, engineers for a subclass 189, the cutoff remained at 90 points. With the last person getting an invitation, so the cutoff date for uh, the industrial en engineer or mechanical engineer or production engineer was 18th of November 2019, and the last date of effect is 1. 36 p.m. Now again, similar to uh, accountants, the mechanical engineer, industrial engineer, and production engineers have received a lot of expression of interest for a subclass 189. Therefore, there is no invitation for a subclass 491 under the family sponsorship stream for industrial and mechanical engineers. Uh, now the next occupation is uh, occupation group 2339, which is other engineering professional, which mainly includes this, uh, the occupation of engineering technologist. The cutoff for that to that occupation is also remained at 90 points in the last person invited. So the cutoff date was 8th of December 2019 with the cutoff time at 3.13 a.m. So as you can see, you know, people are getting the invitation at 90 points in most of the occupations except accountants or even sometimes lower. So you can definitely expect anybody except accountant can expect an invitation at 90 points very confidently we can say that you'll receive an invitation but some occupations might have a bit of longer waiting period as you can see other engineering professionals engineering technologists for example uh, is uh, has an expected waiting period of three months as the, in march somebody got an invitation who lodged an eui in december so as you can see they, that person had to wait three months so based on that i would analyze and say that if the invitation number of invitation remains at thousand you might be receiving an invitation in two to three months time. Uh, now sub, uh, for subclass 189, the next occupation group is 2611, which is ICT business and systems analysts. The cutoff for that occupation is also at 90 points. And the last person invited in this occupation with a date of effect of 7th of January 2020 at 3.08 p.m. As um, also for subclass uh, 491 family sponsorship stream, ICT business analysts and systems analysts have not been invited. The reason being again that the people who have lodged an EUI, uh, so there are if there are many expression of interest for that particular occupation, then the places will be allocated to subclass 189 only. And because there are too many candidates, there is no place allocated for subclass 491. As as I said earlier, that the skill select would allocate on the uh, first available places to a subclass 189 and then only move to 491 if there are places remaining. Now for a software engineers and uh, application programmers, which includes software engineer, analyst programmer, developer programmer, the cutoff remained at 90 points and the cutoff date was 29th of January 2020. So definitely this indicates that there are good chances that if the invitation number of invitation remains at 1000 or more, then this uh, occupation has a very good potential of getting an invitation at 90 points and you might not even have to wait for more than one or two months at 90 points and there is a high probability that the cutoff might even go down at 85 points if the number of invitation remains as thousand per month which indicates that people can 
get some relaxation in that part particularly for uh, programmers because and again as you know that many many applicants who have studied masters in IT or masters in IT can interchange their occupations from ICT business analyst to a programmer or programmer to business analyst so if you do have the occupation uh, assessed in ICT business analyst and you're at 90 points and you think that you want to get your invitation a bit faster probably you want to change your occupation to a programmers because that that is moving a bit faster than uh, business analyst and systems analyst which is not too too big difference but it's around 20 days difference or so 21 days technically now subclass 491 for a software application programmer remained at 85 points as the last invitation round and the cutoff was at 4th of february 2020 so that means the there is high possibility that you'll get an invitation at 85 points if you have lodged an EOI for subclass 491 family sponsorship for programmers or software engineers and that also indicates that because the cutoff for 85 points has already come down to February which is only one month gap now from the last person who's got an invitation so that means the cutoff can go down to 80 points as well there is very good possibility of cutoff going for uh, software programmers uh, and application programmers down to 80 points for subclass 491 and if that happens that probably be a very good news for many candidates who are not able to get a good scores in English uh, or maybe they they miss, they missed some other points and not able to get to 85 or 90 points uh, the next occupation in IT group is ICT group is a uh, computer net network and uh, network professional which includes a computer network and systems engineer the cutoff for subclass 189 remained at 90 points and the cutoff date is also 29th of January 2020 similar to a software engineer so again, as I said, if you're an ICT business analyst, probably a good idea to jump into any of these two occupations, which is software and relocation programmer or computer network professionals, because that occupations are moving a bit faster than the systems and uh, business analyst and systems analyst, which is uh, roughly 21 days difference, which is uh, still considerable time because I would always want to be uh, ahead in the queue and I would always want to change uh, my pace and see if I can obviously increase the chances of getting an invitation for me or my clients let's say uh, to you know even if i if i have to wait for a month and uh, if if my waiting period goes down if i can change the occupation then i would change the occupation because that makes sense more sense because you do not want to lose any opportunity in getting your invitation faster so if you do change your occupation i and while i understand that you might have to apply for a skills assessment again you can always request for a priority with acs if you're in ict occupation because acs does generally do consider um, the application for a priority if your visa is expiring within three months time so um, the cutoff for computer network professionals again is at 90 points 29th of january 2020 so if you are at 90 points you can definitely uh, be very confident that you are likely to get an invitation in next uh, one to two months time and also there is a high probability that the cutoff will go down to 85 points if the number of invitation remains at thousand or more now for subclass 491 family sponsorship stream for a computer network and prof network professionals as uh, the cutoff was until 12th of march 2020 so that but that is at 90 points so again if i have a skills assessment as a computer network professional i probably want to change it to software programmer because there are high possibility that i can get invitation in software and application programmers compared to and computer network professionals so if there is a possibility you can always probably play around with that and try and change your occupation there are other occupations as well which uh, we generally uh, get come across which is nursing now nursing is would probably have to refer to a standard invitation report for subclass 189 which nursing occupations and electronics electrical engineer or telecommunication engineers let's say and uh, motor mechanics chefs all of those occupations are under non pro rata and as i said non pro rata occupation cutoff was also at 90 points with 29th of january 2020 cutoff date and for non pro rata occupation uh, again uh, let's say registered nurse or uh, electrical engineer or telecommunication engineers or ICT security specialist for a family sponsorship stream the cutoff is at 85 points now and the cutoff uh, date was 5th of February 2020 in general so there is a high possibility that the cutoff might even go down to 80 for subclass 491 and there's a high possibility that the cutoff will go down to 85 points in subclass 189 uh, if the invitation number of invitation remains as 
thousand or more for surplus one eight nine and two hundred or three hundred or or more for surplus four nine one family sponsorship stream. Now, if an invitation for a surplus four nine one family sponsorship stream, then you get the five years provisional visa, which is of surplus four nine one, and your visa condition would be that you have to live and work in the regional area for three years and work minimum three years and earn minimum threshold income which is 53,900 and after working three years and living three years in a regional area you can apply for a surplus 191 and that would be a permanent visa so surplus 491 under the family sponsorship stream can lead to a surplus 191 now many people have we have seen that their relatives are living in um, in close to a designated a regional area like let's say for example if i take an example from sydney because i'm from sydney i would probably rather prefer to get an example from example of sydney so somebody is living in penrith and or and and their relatives are living there and they are able to uh, move to richmond let's say which is a regional area and then they can and their relatives are working let's say coals or woolworths or any uh, big franchises or any any big uh, uh, organizations and they can easily transfer their job to a regional area which is also technically not required because they have to just prove that you're their usual resident of regional designated regional area and while they, there is no talk about where they should be working so i wouldn't really bother much about working as well but the place of living and usual resident should be a designated regional area where their whole family lives eats and sleeps so if you have a relative like this you can always see that if whether they are genuinely wanting to move to a are close by designated regional area to help you out that can also work and people do uh, use that um, part because you know if they're already living very next to a regional uh, designated regional area or they're already let's say living very close to the designated regional area they probably do not mind moving further down to another area and probably help you out with that part but they must be qualified relative which is your family member only which is your uncle aunts, uh, real uncle aunts, or your first cousins, which is uh, kids of your parents, brothers, sisters, or their kids, basically. So uh, if you do have the first uh, or blood relatives, you can definitely uh, try subclass 191 as well if you're not able to reach to 85 or 90 points in subclass 189. Now we have got many questions in the, um, in our, uh, in our um, post. So, the first question from Bijay is when can I expect an invitation EOI dated 3rd of July 2019 telecommunication engineer 85 points I would say if the number of Bijay if, if the number of invitation remains at 1000 which I believe should be because as I said the total invitations for surplus 189 is at um, 6950 and I would say the department might want to take it to 1000 at least to meet this financial, this financial year's uh, planning level so if that remains at a thousand per month for next three months uh, probably the cutoff will go down to 85 points but the first person so you're you've lost an ui at 3rd of july 2019 so and with 85 points as a telecommunication engineer which falls under the non pro rata occupation you can definitely expect uh, that the cutoff will go down but then obviously we'll have to see how many people are there ahead of you in the queue with a um, you know prior date of effect before prior to 31st, uh, 3rd of july 2019 so if there are less candidate and uh, then there is definitely a good chances now nobody knows what's the number of innovations or number of occupations are there or number of people are there in the expression of interest uh, in skill select and who are ahead of you at 85 points but we can i, I would definitely say that yes it is very hopeful that uh, the cutoff will go down to 85 points and then you can see how the number of uh, how the cutoff is going from there uh, if once it goes down to 85 points the next question from saroj is uh, talk about registered nurse as well as i said registered nurse nurses they can expect an innovation in subclass 189 if they have 85 or 90 points uh, because the cutoff is likely to go down to 85 as well very soon and very basically a very high possibility and if you have a relative you can also apply for surplus 491 but for nurses we did one more uh, live video in recently as well and about the state nomination so you might want to refer to that video because there are other options for a state nomination if you've graduated from uh, from australia in the last two years so you could apply for a surplus 190 nomination in certain states so you can refer to our previous videos live videos for nursing 
where you can uh, if you're not able to reach 285 or 90 points then you might want to refer to that video and see if you can qualify under that category for subclass 190. Uh, civil engineering technician as I said again for uh, because it falls under a non promoted occupation but we have to see whether that occupation is on a medium and long term list. If it is on the medium and long term skill occupation list then again the cutoff is at 90 points at the moment for most of the occupation as I said but there is a very high possibility that it will go down to 85. Uh, registered nurse, again, Sangeeta, you are at 85 points. You can still be very hopeful that if the number of enrollees remains at 1,000 per month, you can definitely expect an enrollation uh, or let's say the cutoff to go down to 85 points. However, there might be a bit of waiting there because they will again go back to the previous uh, EOIs or let's say anybody who lodged an EOI prior to you at 85 points and then it will go down from the same block like let's say when it comes down to 85 blocks uh, 85 points block then the department will start selecting people who lodged an eoi who have selected or who have lodged an eoi first so that means let's say somebody lodged an eoi in january 2000, 2019 will be selected first if you have lodged an eoi in january 2020 then you will be um, you know there will be a one year's gap between the candidates but obviously and also uh, people with number of people with 85 points are very high so we can definitely uh, expect a high competition there as well but if your date of effect is let's say for example March 2020 or to March 2019 or so there is a very good chances like as we spoke about uh, Bijay who had a date of effect of 3rd of July very good possibility Bijay because as I said uh, until 2019 January uh, until uh, I think February 2019 most of the people with 75 points under the old rules were already cleared so that means that uh, only EOIs have uh, who have lodged an EOI on, only people who have lodged an EOI since February or March 2019 in non prorata occupation with at that time at 75 points might have been at 85 points right now right so I believe that only there will be a few months gap in between uh, July and uh, and March uh, in EOIs because I don't think anybody would have a date of effect before March because most of the EOIs were cleared by March 2020 or March 2019. Now the next question is from uh, Nitesh. Uh, so Nitesh is at 85 points uh, with states points. So Nitesh obviously you are at 80 points and uh, I believe that and because you're in accounting field you should probably try and work out the other options of looking into the state nomination options by probably moving to regional areas or another states i uh, we will have will be having a very uh, uh, detailed live session very soon from our one of our team members on all the state nomination criteria and probably we will cover the accounting part there and you can see uh, and watch that video so that you can probably refer your case there unless you reach at 95 points i don't see a very good chances in accounting uh, field especially especially to get an innovation uh, now next question from Nap is uh, he is at accounting points 100 so that means you are at 95 points in subclass 189 I would reckon that you know we haven't seen many invitation in 190 NSW in accounting field so I would say that probably not would not have a very good chances but you lost an EOI in July 2019 with 95 points that means that you are very close to the last cutoff date which is June 2019 so if you do have uh, the date of effect it, at your 95 points subclass 189 UI, then you can definitely expect an innovation. But I am very afraid that 190 NSW, very hard to say whether you'll, you're likely to get an invite or not because 100 points, there are many candidates at 100 points in subclass 190 in accounting. So, and we haven't seen many people getting an invitation recently. Um, for subclass 189, uh, it's 90 uh, for NAP so if if it is 90 only and that probably you want to consider look at your points and if there is no employment points you're claiming then you might want to change your occupation to external auditor and wait for the invitation there but I would suggest to try and increase your points by five at least because in accounting generally the cutoff is at very high points uh, guys as we are getting too many questions at the moment we will try to answer your questions by uh, writing a, a replies to you on uh, on the uh, comment box so thanks for your watching your, this video today and hopefully we will be our team will start answering your questions very soon and we'll get all your get get, get your questions
answered. However, um, if you do have a questions, you can, you're more than welcome to um, call us and uh, book your appointment because all this group, uh, due to COVID-19, we, have, we, have underst we understand that many students and many international people who have, who have, may have lost their jobs and may be facing a financial difficulties. So therefore, Aussie's group has decided to offer a two weeks free consultations. So next, until uh, for now, we have extended our offer until uh, 10th of April, uh, 2020. Uh, so we are providing free consultations for all of the uh, consultations. So I would suggest that you call the nearest branch and book your appointment and our consultants will be able to call you and provide a phone consultation at no cost at all at the moment so it's the best idea that you can also call our uh, nearest branch of wherever you are located you can call the nearest branch and ask for an appointment for free until 10th of april and that might be extended depending on the further uh, uh, further situations and we will assess the situation of covid 19 further and see whether we, we still need to require or we are still required to extend our offer we will definitely consider extending the offer as well if it is required to do so Hopefully you've, you've uh, learned something out of this video and um, I hope that this information will help you understand where you stand and what to expect in upcoming innovation rounds. And we will also be uh, coming up with a detailed uh, projection of the number of, uh, or let's say the waiting period for accounting and other occupations or probably a pro rata occupations very soon. And you will see our post a detailed post on that too very soon so uh, i hope this helps you this information helps you today and uh, wish you very safe um, uh, life ahead because obviously i understand that everybody's quite scared of uh, covid 19 so i hope everybody remains safe and not be affected by this covid 19 and hopefully you will be able to also at the same time sort your visa issues and i wish you good luck for your future thank you